Hi, my name is Bastian, and thank you so much for taking the time to watch my application for the SSI Fellowship. My academic background is in bioinformatics. In 2018, I finished a PhD in it at the University of Frankfurt, followed by becoming a visiting scholar at the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory in California, where I joined the bioinformatics open source project lab of Susanna Lewis and Chris Mangle. In 2019, I started to lead the peer-produced research lab at the Center for Research and Interdisciplinarity, which is part of INSERM, which is the French NIH equivalent, and the University of Paris, where I am still today. Despite my background in bioinformatics, I have been actively working in the field of citizen science since 2011 to create ways to empower individuals to take part in doing research, and preferentially in all parts of the research cycle you can see at the left. Citizen science is done in many different scientific domains. It includes astronomy, where people annotate telescope images, ecology, where people collect observations on species out in nature, environmental monitoring, where people collect data on air pollution in their neighborhoods or spaces, and many other fields as well. But one thing that is common between all of these is that virtually all citizen science projects have some component that makes use of software in one way or another. It can be custom digital infrastructure to do data annotations, mobile apps to record observations in the field, or custom software to control the hardware that collects data out in the field if you do environmental monitoring. Unfortunately, as in many disciplines, best software engineering practices are not necessarily deeply ingrained yet in the culture of this interdisciplinary research community. I have personally have been working on various citizen science projects that make heavy use of software to enable these over the past years. In 2011, while I was doing my master's degree, I've launched OpenSNP together with a friend, which is a platform that enables people to share their own genetic data from 23andMe and other companies into the public domain alongside their phenotypic annotations like hair color, eye color, but also different medical conditions. Since then, it has grown to be the largest open database for this kind of data, with over 6,000 data sets to date, and it still keeps growing. Since 2017, I've been working on Open Humans, which provides a digital infrastructure to enable citizen science projects around using personal data, which can be wearables, medical devices, geolocation, or whatever else data people have. And it handles data importing, data sharing mechanisms, as well as digital consenting, both for the academic use and for patient-led or individual community-led research projects. An example of such a community-led project is Quantified Flu, which we did together with our community of citizen scientists last year during the pandemic, which is a new digital tool for people to collect data on their symptoms of infection alongside the wearable data. What all of these projects have in common is that they are open source and developed not only openly, but in co-creation practices with practitioners, which are both academic researchers and the citizen scientists that are supposed to use them to create better, more appropriate infrastructure. Beyond this very software-centric and development side, I'm also very active in community organizing, mentoring, and teaching. Since 2018, I'm on the board of the Open Bioinformatics Foundation, where I organize yearly conferences on open source tools and open science practices at large in the fleet of bioinformatics. I've also been an active mentor in the Open Leadership Program of the former Mozilla Science Lab while it was still existing and afterwards to support and give advice to various projects in implementing best open source development and community building practices. And last but not least, I also teach at my institution. At the CRE, I teach the Open Science course, which is mandatory for all master students, regardless of whether they study life sciences, digital science, or learning sciences, and best practices for developing code and sharing and play a big role in it. So what are my plans for the fellowship? I have two main aspects to it. First, I want to organize workshops and roundtable discussions about better software practices at upcoming international citizen science conferences, both in person, but also in remote ones. 2022 will be a meeting rich year in citizen science. The European Citizen Science Association, the biggest citizen science association in Europe, is organizing a biannual meeting again next year, and the Global Citizen Science Association is as well. Furthermore, I've already submitted some workshop proposals to the Engaging Citizen Science Conference, which will happen next year at Aarhus University in Denmark. And based on my, on my experience in giving workshops about open research practices, for example, at the Mozilla festivals, I will organize workshops at those conferences to both raise awareness on best software engineering practices and try to promote the existing communities of practice, which already exist in the field.
My second goal is to organize workshops, particularly for students or courses for students on best practices for research software in the field of citizen science, but also beyond. And this will be done in collaboration on the one hand with the Extreme Citizen Science Group at UCL, because they just launched their own master program for citizen science. Moki Haklai, who leads the group at UCL, is a very close collaborator with our institute and bringing together both the UCL students in citizen science and our Cree students in both digital learning and life sciences can be a great way to kickstart the crosstalk between the two domains and the students can benefit from this. Additionally, I'm also working with the University of Southern Denmark, where we next year will also do a workshop on citizen science and software development will be part of this as well. I think these are two very nice approaches to, to spread the mission of the SSI and support best software engineering practices in the field. Thanks so much and have a great day.